Greetings and welcome to the broadcast. I'm Sean and the website is www.scriptureandprophecy.com And uh, I'm aware that I said on Tuesday that we would continue our study in Revelation 17 and 18, but I've decided to stick with uh, the original format in regards to that. Uh, so we'll be back to that study on Tuesday as usual. And uh, today's recording is only going to be a few minutes, and I'll explain why here in just a second. Uh, we may try an experiment on Sunday night, and uh, again, I'll explain more about that here in just a few minutes. Uh, you know, I have to admit to you guys uh, that this week, and really the last couple of weeks, have just been very spiritually challenging, and um, lots of spiritual oppression as of late. And, you know, I, I don't think it's any coincidence uh, that it's happening during this series that we're working on. And if you're uh, just tuning in, uh, right now we're doing a series called Remnant in the Wilderness. And uh, on top of that, we just happen to be getting ready or getting into the Babylon, <clears throat> excuse me, a Babylon conversation in our Revelation study. And uh, let me just tell you, the cotton candy Christians... Uh, they they hate the conversation about the remnant and, and what that looks like. And the enemy absolutely hates it, especially when I get behind the microphone and I call people to walk according to God's word, uh, walking in righteousness and holiness. And I'm amazed that we live in a day and age where the church, by and large, rejects the concept of being obedient to God's word walking in righteousness and holiness. I mean, we've really adopted a completely different mindset uh, within Christianity. That's extremely con contrary to what God's Word actually says. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that I blame that on. And uh, I'm going off notes here, <laughs> just kind of thinking, you know, and, and one of the things that I've talked a lot about is Bible translations. Um, you know, there's 200 and some Bible translations out there. And 99.9% .9 of them today use the Westcott and Hort manuscripts, uh, which came out of Egypt, which are not even close to complete. Um, they were put together by guys who reject Christ as uh, an atonement for sins, who, who, who reject his deity, um, who were involved in all kinds of other cultic rituals. And this is the manuscripts that the Bibles were being pieced together by. Uh, this day and age. There's only a handful out there that use the Texas Receptus, uh, which is the bulk of all the manuscripts we have uh, that actually are in agreement with one another, while the other ones, where there's only a few, they don't even agree with each other. They, you know, they disagree with each other just in the Gospels like 8,000 times, just in the Gospels alone. Missing pieces, I mean, it's, it's mind-blowing. And then you know, young men go to seminary and they're taught that, well, these Westcott and Hort manuscripts are the oldest and the best and most reliable. So those are the reasons we go off those. And then they go into the church preaching out of an NIV Bible, which is, you know, and I, I wasn't even planning on bringing that up. But that's just something that drives me insane, uh, that people have not done enough work or research. And a lot of people's idea of research is they go and they Google something for 10 minutes. And then they want to come and argue with me about their 10-minute Google study when I've got 50, 60 hours poured into this. And there's other people out there who've done the work as well. So I don't even know why I went on that tangent, but that just falls in line with why people's minds and thinking are different because it starts with the Word and knowing the Word. And then if you have a preacher in the pulpit who's more concerned about quoting his favorite author and quoting men and traditions of men than he is quoting the Bible, then when he does quote the Bible, he's quoting an NIV and quoting it out of context, then you have a group of people, depending on how large the church is, who are completely led astray. And that's what I see taking place, and that's why we're doing this series called Remnant in the Wilderness, because what's happened is the remnant has recognized that what's coming out of there is not right, it is not true, it is not of God, and they've left the church. And now they're out in the wilderness wondering, what do we do? Where do we go? Where can we be fed? 
And that's what's happening. And that's what I've been talking about these last few weeks. And you may think that I just get behind this microphone. By the way, I kind of like going just off the cuff versus staying on notes. You you know, you can really, the, the, the stuff just, you know, you can really let God just kind of pour it into you instead of being stuck on your notes. Now, you may think that I just get behind this microphone, you know, twice a week for 30 or 40 minutes, and it's no big deal, right? But what you don't see is the lack of sleep, the getting up early, you know, before work, the the hours of research, the praying, the emails, the comments, the spiritual battles that come along with all of this. It's not easy, friends. And it's really not easy to speak out against the lies that are permeating through Christianity today. And they, and they say, hey, actually, this is what it looks like to walk in holiness when it's completely contrary to being taught, which means I'm going to get opposition after opposition after opposition. Do you know I don't know a single person on planet Earth that sees things the way that I'm talking about them, the way I talk about them in my podcast, at least not completely, the way that I see it? When it comes to obeying God's commands and the, the Hebraic heritage and, you know, very few people. People say, Sean, why don't you start a church? Why don't you start your own church? Well, I don't even know who I'd invite, for starters. <laughs> Not to mention the logistics and everything. You know, these are the last days. And the deception is great. And the apostasy and the falling away that we read about in the Bible, it's real. And I'm, and I'm, you know, I would say that somewhere around 90% of Christians seem to be under that deception of Babylon. They don't want to hear the truth. And so when you speak it, you get resistance. And I tell you all of this not to gain sympathy or to complain, but so that you will hopefully remember me in your prayers and pray for me. And pray for strength and wisdom and God's favor and mercy to be upon me and upon my household. Anyway, I said it was going to be a short broadcast, but I don't want to just come back here and not point out scripture. And, uh, you know, last week we talked about, because, you know, what are we doing if we're not looking at the scriptures, right? That's the purpose, not for me to just get back here and give my thoughts and opinions. Uh, But last week I pointed out, uh, I talked about how so many people are trading their inheritance, right? They're, they're, you know, instead of storing up treasures in heaven, they're storing them up on earth, and they're literally trading their eternal inheritance, their reward in heaven for the things of this earth in the same manner that Esau traded his firstborn blessing, his birthright for a bowl of soup. And interesting enough... I was reading through Hebrews chapter 12 yesterday morning and I came across this passage and I wanted to share it with you guys. So if you go to Hebrews chapter 12 and you look at verse 14 through 17 and it says this, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I mean that line alone. We could spend an hour just talking about that line alone. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Verse 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. I had no idea that was in there. I wish I would have had that last week when I was talking about that very thing. The verse says, Let there be, let, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one morsel of meat, one little earthly thing, sold his birthright. 
Verse 17, For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. And if you remember the story, he begged his father Isaac, Give me the blessing. But Isaac said, you know, it can't be undone. It's already been given to your brother Jacob. My friends, this, this is serious stuff. And the way you approach God and your relationship with Him and your inheritance most definitely matters. And my goal is to teach what the Bible actually says. Not what your favorite author says, not what seminary school says, not what the traditions of men say, but just to read the text. I mean, we just read the text out of Hebrew, right? And we need to take it for what it says. And I guess my goal at this point is to call the remnant to righteousness and holiness because I believe God is going to be doing great exploits through those who have readied themselves and prepared themselves. And again, I'm not talking about salvation. We, you know, we all know, we should all know that salvation only comes through faith in Christ and through what he did for you, which is that he took your place, became the sacrificial lamb, died for your sins. And if you believe that he did that, that he was buried and he wrote, and God rose him again on the third day and he ascended to the right hand of the father, you will be saved. But we're talking about your inheritance. We're talking about what role you're going to play. We're talking about how close to God you're going to be for an eternity because the decisions you're making today are going to decide what your eternity looks like. Not from a you know heaven or hell perspective, but from a kingdom perspective. And so that's what I'm trying to do here. All right, so here's what I'm going to go out on a limb and attempt to do. And I got to tell you, I got mixed feelings about doing this. Um, but I thought, what the heck, we're just going to give it a shot and just see what happens. And if it doesn't go well, we won't do it again. Uh, so Sunday night, 6 p.m., we're going to attempt to do a live teaching, live broadcast, kind of like a virtual church scenario Uh but not really. It's really just the podcast, uh, but we're going to be doing a lesson. We're going to be talking about the 10 virgins and continuing our series in, um, or continuing our series of Remnant in the Wilderness. And uh, we're going to do the part that I have been thinking about and pondering about uh, in regards to uh, the 10 virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish. What does that mean? What is, what is going on there? That's what we're going to talk about. And, um, you know, I can't promise that it's going to go well or that there won't be technical problems, uh, but I'm going to attempt to see how it goes and then evaluate things after that and, and moving forward and just see what the Spirit of God says, you know, um, in that moment and after that moment. And if he says to continue to move forward in this way, if it's his will, then that's what we'll do. Um, if I feel like he's saying no, go back to doing what you were, then that's what we'll do. Um, so hop on YouTube around 6 p.m. on Sunday night. Hopefully it's working. If not, if things fall apart and don't happen, uh, don't worry. I will still record the message either way, and it'll be in the podcast feed. Um, so even if you can't make it to the live feed on YouTube, you can still listen to it like you normally do. Uh, because it'll be in the podcast, it'll be in iTunes, it'll be on SoundCloud, it'll be on YouTube after the fact, either way. Um, I won't be taking questions or moderating chat or anything like that, but the chat will be open, uh, you'll be free to speak with one another, um, and we'll just see how it goes. And like I said, if you can make it, great, if not, the recording will be there. Uh, this is just a test um, to see how things go. Um, I wanted to... You know, here's the thing. I love doing the podcast, but and and podcasting is really, you know, what at least up until this point, what I've been called to do. But then part of me wants to have the slides, you know, with the scripture on it. I want you to see the words themselves for those of you who are watching it on YouTube, and those for you who are listening to it. You know, nothing will change for you. Uh, those for you just listen to it in the car. 
Um, so I don't know. We're just gonna we're gonna see how it works. Um, obviously, Sabbath starts tonight, so I'm not gonna be working on it or messing with it until uh, Sunday. You know, Sunday during the day, I'm gonna. I've already got the notes and everything for it put together. I just need to build the slides. I need to do some artwork and Photoshop. There's some ideas that I'm working on with that, and I'm gonna try to have it all put together and ready to go uh, for you Sunday evening. And so we will see how it plays out. If for some reason things aren't going to happen, um, I will let you know through Facebook and through email. So those of you who are subscribed to the email list or those of you who are following me on Facebook or Twitter, I'll let you know through that if something changes. Um, and if you're not following any of those things, I would recommend you do. I don't use them just to spam you. I use them for things like this. And uh, so anyway, that's my ramble for today. I just wanted to come behind here and give a short little thing, and it ended up being about 10 minutes longer than I was expecting, but hey, that's what I like about just going off the cuff. You never know uh, what you're going to feel coming into your spirit. Peace and grace be with all of you. Pray that Sunday evening goes well. God bless. <laughs>